everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Today I am doing three looks with the Alien Cosmetics palette. This is the Serendipity palette. So here's what it looks like on the inside. It's a nine pan palette. It has some mattes, some metallics, some uh, more satiny shades, and some kind of flaky duochrome goodness in it. So if you are interested in seeing some looks with this palette, or if you just want to get some colorful inspiration, keep on watching. too far into the video, please consider subscribing before you go. I make new videos every week, upload on Sunday. It's free to subscribe and we have a lovely friendly group down in the comments below. We'd be happy to have you. So this is the third look you're seeing right now. We're going to rewind in time a little bit and get into the first look now. All right, guys, so here we are for look one with the Alien Cosmetics and Serendipity palette. I've already done my base and everything, have my eye primer on. So here's the color story we're working with. Today for the first look, I'm going to go more on the green side. I'm going to use the yellow as a transition. Use this deep green on the outer V. Use this one on the rest of the lid. And I think... I think I'm gonna top it with one of these two outside greens. I haven't decided which one yet. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Just gonna use an M441. That's the brush I like to use with transition shades a lot of times to get started with my looks. So I'm going just in the crease here and you can see right away, this is a pretty pigmented yellow, you guys. Um, I do really like the formula. I am still waiting on the Lore palette that I ordered from Alien Cosmetics to be delivered. It hasn't arrived yet. So I thought this video might hold us over a little bit in the meantime if you have this one or are just curious about the brand, their formula, seeing it in action. And if you want me to do another multiple looks one palette with the lore when it finally comes in, I definitely can do that. So I've just laid pretty thickly the yellow here in the crease. And I take my crease shade up pretty high just because I have hooded eyes. Totally depends on the shape of your eye, what you want to do. That's just me. Next, I'm going to go in with my M456. And I'm going to take the deepest shade in the palette here, this deep green and start working that just on the outer V. It's gonna be a really good deepening shade to give us dimension on the outer third. And I also always like to use this shade on the outside to try to start shaping like kind of where my wings will go. You can already see it almost looks like a wing just with the way I've placed the shadow diagonally like that. So I usually try to place the most product towards the lid and then work the excess out and then I'll also take it and put it into the crease and blend it in a little no extra product just blending what is already there already left up into the crease same on this side we'll work what we have up into the crease a little bit. I don't notice too much fallout with this palette, especially if you tap your brush, but if you do notice a little, you can always just take a little face brush and wipe underneath to get there. And I don't notice these having too much fallout or like smeariness or anything like that. So here's where we are so far. Everything's pretty blending. Um, that dark green is a little patchy, but I noticed that with a lot of shadows on this one particular eye of mine, so I'm not really going to say that's the product, because I know that happens consistently on this eye on me for some reason, um, but they look pretty good there. They're pretty decently blended, so I'm going to take the same brush that I took for the outer V here. I'm going to use this more true green on the rest of the lid that we haven't touched yet. I'm gonna be a bit more precise about the placement of this one. I'm gonna blend it into that outer V shade, but I'm not gonna take it up too much into the crease. I'm just gonna like follow a natural crease, almost as if I was going to do some kind of cut crease here. And just follow it and blend it into the outer V shade. And repeat on the other side. 
I'm also going to take a little bit of a smaller brush here, one I kind of like for the lower lash line. I'm gonna take that deepest green and that more true green on the lower lash line as well, just to connect things. All right, so I've decided for today, I'm just gonna go in with the regular shimmer formula here. I'm just gonna tap that in the middle this also is kind of a trick, you guys. If you have issues with blending those two colors, you can take a shimmer kind of where they meet and that will help kind of camouflage a bit more that color transition here. I'm gonna mostly try to focus it in the center and I do like to take my shimmers a bit up into the crease as well just so you can see them when I open my eyes. And then if you feel you went over it too much, like you didn't quite keep it in the center enough, you can go back with your matte shades on either side, like that true green here in the center and then deep green on the outside and you can just clean up and put it again just where you want it to keep it matte so the shimmer doesn't go too far out of hand. Then last but not least here, I'm gonna go back in with that yellow just one more time at the top, make sure that doesn't get lost in this beautiful sea of green we have created. And then I think just for a little duochrome goodness, you could totally leave it here. I'm gonna go with this shade here. It's pretty sheer, pretty putty feeling. I'm still gonna try to go on a brush here. This is an M560. This is more of a topper shade, but I'm gonna try it in the inner corner. And it's kind of like a green to a reddish shift. I'm gonna connect that a little bit here in the lower lash line to everything else we had going on here too. This would be a gorgeous shade too. Like I said, I was debating to put over the middle of the lid here if you wanted. Just decide to go with the shimmer today. Hopefully you guys can see in the inner corner there that shade that I've added. It's very sheer though, so I won't be surprised if it doesn't show up, but it is a topper. Like it's got no base. It's like a clear base to it, but then it's got like a green to a reddish burgundy shift to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the rest of the look and I'll be back to show you the finished look number one. Okay, so here is the finished look one. I really like how it turned out. Obviously I went for a more dramatic lash today, but you could do whatever you wanted with this same color look that I did today. I went in with the Kiss Lashes in Style Chiffon. A little bit of the Raw Beauty Christie ColourPop Collection Woodsy Eyeliner in the Waterline. Araceli uh, Liquid Eyeliner in shade Coffee on the upper waterline. What else did I do? Milani Highly Rated Mascara on the lower lash line and NYX on the Rise Volume Lift Mascara on the top lash line. Um, Milani Lip Liner and Lipstick Combo and there's uh, the Salt and Peppa collab in shade Shoop. And a gloss, it's the gloss from Jeffree Star Cosmetics in beaded glass. So those are all my like finishing touches. So that's it for look one guys. Let's go ahead and get into look two. All right guys, here we are for look number two. Since yesterday I did more of the yellow and green, I'm gonna go for more of the red cranberry vibe today. I'm also gonna try to do kind of like a halo eye today. I haven't done one in a while. So I'm gonna go in with my Morphe M506 and I'm actually gonna start with this deep kind of cranberry matte shade. And I'm gonna go both in the outer corner and the inner corner. I did already use my eyeshadow primer. Same one I used yesterday. I've been using it every day. It's the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer in case you are wondering. And I usually start with a different brush in the crease, but I'm trying to be a little more precise since we're going for a halo eye, so I picked a smaller brush today. And then once I've got the inner and outers here, I'm not gonna do a transition shade. You could, I suppose, if you wanted to. But I'm just going to take what's left from these outer corners and kind of blend it to connect in the middle once I've got what I want built up on the outer corners here. So like I said, I'm just blending up into the crease, leaving the middle though, empty, clear, plain, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna put something else there. 
Don't forget too guys, just because you have your palette, don't feel like you can't dip into things outside of this palette. Like, if I wanted to deepen this for example, like, this is one of the deepest shades in the palette. I could deepen it up with this green, I used that in the look yesterday, but I want this to stay more of a true cranberry or red, so you could pull in a black from something else. It's a little more extra, but you can do it. I'm not going to, just because I am trying to stick to this palette today, but just trying to help you guys with your creativity a little bit and uh, get some ideas to pull from some different things. So I'm actually gonna go in the middle with this shimmery red down here, and I'm just gonna take it on my finger. It feels a little more coarse than some of the other shades I've used so far, and I'm just gonna put that sparkle in the middle. It's like kind of a metallic red. Let me push a little bit more. Yeah, this red is pretty coarse. I mean, I don't wanna say gritty. That's not the right word for it. Hmm. It's just not popping as much as I want to. I'm gonna go ahead and stick on a glitter primer on the other eye here, just to see if that makes any difference or not. Maybe it won't. So you can use any glitter primer you want. Um, a lot of people like the NYX glitter primer as a cheap, affordable option. The one I'm using is from Ulta. It's just what I happen to have with me in front of me right now. That in the center only on an M410. Honestly, not the best shape. This is kind of weird shaped. I usually go for more curved shape for glitter primer, but as I said, it's just what I had in front of me right now. We just make it work, you know? I've got like all these swatches all over my hand trying to decide what I wanted to do today with my look. All right, so going back in with the same red shade, still using my finger, trying to give it its best chance with my finger. Putting it over the glitter primer. I don't know. Do you guys see a difference between the two? Let me try to build it up just a little bit more. So I like the red to the shade, but I don't see a huge pop between this eye with the primer and this eye without. And frankly, neither is super impressive to me. And it's not that they're bad. I just say they're not impressive to me compared to some of the other special shades I have found in this palette so far. Um, like the one I used on the inner corner in the first look. So I'm just going in the inner and outer corner. It's going to connect a little more. It's not my favorite formula for that particular shade, but it is what it is. And then I'm just going to take a uh, brush here with no product, go around the edges and just make sure it's nice and blended since I didn't use any sort of transition shade. This is just a Vasanti, it's technically a concealer buffer brush, but use what you have, people. And yeah, this just isn't quite special enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and make it even more special. Yesterday I went in with this shade, which was more of like a green to burgundy. I'm gonna go in with this middle shade, and it is kind of the consistency of the ColourPop Super Shock Shadows, I think that's what they're called. Here it is, I mean, look at that. It's like blue and red. So I'm just gonna tap that, ooh, over that middle section here, over that red to give it a little bit more of a special look here since we were a bit lacking before. That, that's more like it, people. I really hope it's picking up on camera how shifty and wonderful that shade it is. It is kind of like what I used in the inner corner. The consistency is different. The consistency of the other one was more like a traditional shimmer, but it's similar in its effect where it's like a clear base, but also a duochrome. Like I said, this is more of like a red to a blue. The other was more of a burgundy to a green. It, it honestly makes my eyelids look liquidy, like it looks like that glossy eye that's kind of popular right now. I, I really like the, the blue sparkle with the red underneath. What do you guys think? Let me know of this look. Um, I think too, just because I liked it so much the first time, I'm gonna take a little bit of that other special shade and stick it in the inner corner because that just i loved how that looked and a little bit carried right here on the lower lash line 
Oh, I just love how that looks. It brings a little bit more of a green into it, but I kind of thought I wouldn't do it with the blue one because it is a little more like top of glitter reflect looking than the green one. But for this other one, it's so finely milled that I want to try it as a highlighter. And that's this one I'm talking about again. And I've been trying to convince myself not to buy the Ofra Cosmetics Motherly Earth highlighter that they came out with special edition for Earth Day. And that is more of like a pink to a green shift from what I've seen. But I don't have any green highlighters and that's why I was so drawn to it. But I kind of thought, this is such a clear base. Why not use this as a green highlighter? I mean, Kaleidos makes them right, why not? So, if it had kind of a, a based color to it, I wouldn't be able to do it. But I think since it is more like clear, maybe a little tan, that I'll be able to get away with it. What do you guys think? Can you see it? Let me scooch myself into the frame. Goodness, a little bit better. There's the eyeshadow. So it's the same thing that I've got in the inner corners here as I now have on the cheekbone. It's got a little bit of a, a tan undertone, but I think that's just because of the like reddish shift to it. Like when you shift it green, it doesn't look like it has a base. A little bit of shadow there when it shifts to the red. See, this angle right here, I think looks kind of bad. It looks like I have like unblended contour. But then when I shift it, let me see if I can for you. It's hard on this cheek. This cheek, cheek is showing up a lot better. The green on camera, at least. Looks a little better. I don't know. Even with the red, I think it could be blended into blush and look really nice. This side just isn't wanting to cooperate on camera for some reason. Yeah, I think I like that, you guys. Let me know what you think. But this is look number two. I'm gonna go off camera real quick. Actually, what am I doing? I have like nothing in my lower lash line. Hello. I'm gonna go with that same burgundy shade on the outer third and run whatever's left to the middle. This is an M124. And then I'm gonna take that same red shimmer, the one that isn't my favorite, and go with that too. There is another red here, but it is more of like a golden red. I haven't used that one yet. So I'll try to incorporate into my third look. Let's see, what haven't I used? I think that might be the only shade I haven't used yet because I used the, the yellow, the green, the green, and this one in my first look. All right, everyone, so here is the finished second look all completed. I went ahead and used, once again, my Milani Highly Rated Mascara for the upper and lower lashes. Did a little bit of just a random black eyeshadow to uh, cover the lash band. These are the Kiss Lashes in style Brazier. They're pretty dramatic. I don't think I like them as much as Chiffon, the style I wore in my first look, but they're okay. Um, I used, once again, the Raw Beauty and ColourPop collab in the lower waterline. Um, what else here? Oh, lipstick. Used the Clinique lipstick in shade A Different Grape on the lips. And then I topped it with a bit of the gloss from Jeffree Star Cosmetics in shade Succulent, just because it does have a little bit of the same blue reflect that the eyes have, so I thought it would help it be a little more like matchy-matchy. So there is the second look. And now without further ado, on to the third and final look. All right, guys, hey, it is time for look three, the last and final look here with the Serendipity palette. I'm going to attempt to do something a little more natural, neutral, considering how colorful this palette is today. I've done two pretty dramatic looks with lashes and the whole glam aspect. Um, so I'm gonna try to show you guys kind of more of a toned down wear, way to wear this. Of course, you could always go there if you want to, um, but I'm gonna try to do something a little bit different. So I'm going in first with my M506. And I'm actually gonna take the yellow shade and I'm gonna put it all on the inner corner and all the way up into my crease, like in the first half of my eye here. 
I am going with a smaller brush though. A lot of times I'll start with my first color with a larger brush, but I really want to control where all this goes. I really love this matte yellow, guys. Sometimes you get kind of wimpy yellows, but this one is quite good. So my goal for today's look was to use that final shade. That way you guys have seen at least incorporated into the three looks all the shades in one way. That's gonna be that uh, red kind of glittery golden shade. It's not a pressed glitter though. Don't think just because I'm saying glittery, maybe shimmery is the better word for it, but there are no pressed glitters in this palette. I'm going to try to use this matte yellow with the matte cranberry color that I'd used in look two. I'm gonna try to blend them together, see if I can get kind of like an orange in the middle here and then put on that reddish gold shimmery shade. Thought that could be something a little bit different. And I'm sure if you guys have watched all three looks, you may be thinking, you know, these aren't revolutionary, like crazy editorial looks by any means. You might think they're pretty basic, but for me, number one, I consider myself kind of like an intermediate level makeup artist, but also my goal is not to do something crazy editorial with, you know, using all nine shades or anything like that. I want to create looks that anybody can make. Um, certainly you could even go more basic, which basic is not a bad thing. Don't think that, but I want to create things that anybody watching could recreate easily, regardless of your experience level. So that's kind of my goal and what I'm keeping in mind as I am making these looks for you all as well. So I'm going to an M456. I started with an M506. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Basically no new product, just gonna try to blend these. I wanna see if I can get kind of like an orange in the middle here as the cranberry and the yellow meet doesn't look like it's really happening though too much for me, but that's okay. Um, that's kind of why I went with this plan as well because if you ever have mattes that aren't gelling, it's a little bit orange I think up here, don't you guys think? Um, but you can kind of disguise where they're meeting if they're not meshing well with a shimmer, a little bit of a cheat trick there. So I'm just gonna blend these edges in the middle a bit more till I'm happy with them. I'm going back and forth between these two brushes and I'll be back when I'm ready to add that uh, lid shade, the shimmery one. All right guys, I'm back. I don't know if they ever truly really made an orange. You guys can let me know what you think here. I don't know if it's because it wasn't a true red and it was more of that like dark burgundy. It's got a little more of a brown red tone to it. I think I got them blended pretty well, but they didn't create a new third color in the middle like I was going for. So I'm taking here just on an M410, a little bit of my Ulta uh, glitter primer here, just to make sure that shade I'm about to add pops. But I'm not going over the whole lid, I'm just going over the middle of each one here. Because I do still want to see these mattes peeking out of the side. I just want a little glitz in the middle. One, because I like glitz. Two, because like I said, if two aren't meshing super well in the middle, you can use this as a trick to uh, help cover that a bit. And then this is the last shade we haven't used in any of the looks here yet. Super, super shimmery. It is like a red to a gold shift. Oh my goodness. I didn't do any of my looks like this in this video, but this would be stunning with the greens if you were wanting to do like a red and green Christmas, honestly, like holiday look. That would be beautiful. Not that you couldn't do that any other time of year too. I just, I don't know, I guess red and green, I was thinking holiday. This is gorgeous. Ooh, that's so exciting. This is probably the best like shimmery red in my entire collection, honestly. I hope the camera and the lights are picking up just how just genuinely splendid this shadow is. Um, I'm gonna go in once more with both of the colors I started with. 
just to blend here on the edges up against that shimmer. Make sure nothing fades or gets lost. But I think I'm really happy with this combination, guys. It's really nice. I'm gonna take the same um, kind of like cranberry shade. Sorry if I'm bad at describing colors, but the one thing about this palette that I wish were different, literally the only thing, I wish that the shades had names. <laughs> there are no shades, so I just have to kind of like come up with my best descriptions I can for how to describe each one. The Lore palette that I'm waiting on does have shade names. So if you're enjoying seeing the quality of eyeshadows from Alien Cosmetics in this video, or if you're just curious about the Lore palette, whatever, let me know in the comments down below. I would be happy to do another of these multiple looks, one palette videos when that Lore palette comes in. So pretty. I feel like it needs a little bit of an inner corner, but I've done this as the inner corner on both of the other looks. I like this red metallic, but I feel like it's a little too deep for the inner corner. Hmm. Again, I feel like you could pull from other palettes to do so much more. Like I could do like a yellow shimmer in the inner corner. That would look really pretty. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna go um, with highlighter for today's inner corner because I haven't done highlighter yet. So I think I'm just gonna take a little bit of uh, Rodeo Drive, which is a highlighter from Ofra, and just stick that in the inner corner so I have a little bit of brightness. There's not a ton of, as we've discussed in the other looks, um, lighter transition or like brightening shades. So you might need to pull from your collection, but I think I've done a pretty good job of showing you guys though that you can make looks that are gorgeous just from this palette exclusively. So um, like I said, <laughs> I said I was gonna go more natural neutral. I think this will still work. I'm not gonna do falsies. You certainly could go there and make it like boom. Um, but I'm just gonna do mascara and lips and a couple other things and, and try to make it more of like a day look. We'll see how or if I succeed. I'll be right back and let you know. Guys, and here is the third and final look. I think it's definitely wearable, um, but you could take it there as well. So the last couple things here I use, I use the ColourPop uh, Gel Liner in shade Punch, sorry, Cream Gel Liner in shade Punch, yellow in the waterline there, just to go with the yellow theme and really to make the yellow pop on the lower lash line I went in the, with the uh, ColourPop Volumizing this is their BFF Volumizing Mascara in shade Yellow Goodbye it's a yellow mascara so I did that mascara on just the lower lash line and then for the top lashes I went in with the NYX on the Rise Volume Lift Scara um, and this shade is just called black on the lips, I did the Jeffree Star Velour Liquid Lipstick in shade Fully Nude, and then in just in the center, just to kind of sort of ombre it a bit, I went in with the Trace Stique Mini Matte Lip Crayon in Nantucket Nude. So that is the final look. What do you guys think? This one I really like. I like especially the yellow up against that shimmer. I don't know, something about it. It's just very, it just pops. It really like draws the center to my eyes, which I like a lot. That is it for this week's video, guys. Let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite look, one, two, or three. Let me also know what you think of these three looks, one palette videos. I can definitely make more if you've got other palettes that you have seen that I have in my collection. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd enjoy seeing. I'd be more than happy to make that video for you. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day and hopefully I'll see you back next week on the next one. Bye.